Hi, and thanks for watching this message video. Today we're continuing on in our series where we're looking at what Jesus taught his first followers about making followers throughout the world. And we're approaching it as if Jesus taught them a recipe with nine different ingredients in it. Last week we talked about faith, which is the first ingredient, and today we're talking about the second ingredient, which is obedience. Now, if you've read the book of Matthew, you know that Jesus sent all of those disciples out with a great big command of obedience, but then he told them that he personally was going to be with them. In fact, here's what he said, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, all power in heaven and on earth is given to me. So go and make followers of all people in the world. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything that I have taught you, and I will be with you always, even until the end of this age. What Jesus meant by that statement was that he personally, or his spirit, was going to be in them, otherwise known as the Holy Spirit, to guide and direct them. So with that being said, because Jesus is currently living in us, empowering us through his Holy Spirit, our obedience to God's will is critical, and all disobedience is interpreted as a rebellion. Let me explain it another way. Prior to Jesus' death and resurrection, which he tried to explain to these guys multiple times, he told them that both faith and obedience were so critical and that after his death and resurrection, they would be sent the Holy Spirit, which would help them with both. And it wasn't going to be just them. Jesus actually explained that it was not just for them, but for everybody. This is what he told them. John 14, 15 through 26. If you love me, obey my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Soon the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them, and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but the other disciple with that name, said to him, Lord, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not to the world at large? Jesus replied, all who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. I am telling you these things now while I am with you. But when the Father sends the Advocate as my representative, that is the Holy Spirit, he will teach you everything and remind you of everything I have told you. Obedience is critical, and what Jesus was trying to help these guys to understand was that the Holy Spirit was going to help them with that, to help them remember what his teachings were, as well as to guide them into what it is that, that Jesus wanted them to do once the Holy Spirit was a part of their lives, and now he was in heaven. And that's all that he was warning them about. And it is so critical that we have the Holy Spirit, and there's obvious evidence that without the Holy Spirit, you and I are going to struggle when it comes to both faith and obedience. For instance, as many of you probably know, from this point on, he continued to teach these guys and help them to understand what faith and obedience means, but when it came to the cross, his death, they all lost faith. Not just Peter, every single one of them. But after his resurrection, he continued to remind them of these things and to remind them that the Holy Spirit would be coming. And indeed, when the Holy Spirit did come into their lives on the day of Pentecost, what we see is that Peter began to preach. And when he was speaking to the Jews, they became aware of their disobedience and asked him specifically, hey, what do I got to do about this? It was the result of the Holy Spirit working inside of not just Peter's life, but in their life. And this is what Peter said to them that they needed to do. Acts 2, 38 through 39. Peter replied, Each of you must repent of your sins and turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is to you, to your children, and to those far away, all who have been called by the Lord our God. Just like Jesus said, his spirit was sent, and when the spirit came, it would help everybody with obedience. It would help them to understand what Jesus was trying to teach them. And one of the very first signs that 
the Holy Spirit is a part of a person's life is when they have faith and now the power to be obedient to the things that God is teaching. And clearly one of the very first things that God taught anybody who has faith and now is going to be obedient to what God's will is, it's to be baptized. In fact, that was a part of his major command to every single one of his followers, not just to teach people, but to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In fact, Jesus made this such a point of emphasis that when he originally decided, yep, I'm going to do the will of God, I'm going to go get baptized by my cousin John. In fact, this is what happened. Matthew 3, 13 through 15. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John, but John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. Our faith in God, demonstrated by our obedience to his commands, is a big deal to God, and it always will be a big deal to God, and, and Jesus knew this, and so why he demonstrated getting baptized was because he knew that it was a command, that God required it. Therefore, this is something the enemy, Satan, is going to fight against us at every step along the way, obedience to God's commands, even with that very first one, getting baptized in water, meaning there are a lot of people who haven't. They've rationalized it away one way or the other, and therefore there is a part of their life still that they're not obedient in. Now, does this mean that they're not saved? No, I'm not going to say that, but I will say this, that if a person continues on in rebellion, open rebellion, then they are going to be dealt with by God. I guarantee that. And ultimately, when a person is disobedient and continues to rationalize, it affects their faith. Faith and, and obedience always go together. And when those two things start to become deteriorated, there is a warning that has always been given to everybody. In fact, the writer of the book of Hebrews was very strong in his warning to New Testament people, reminding them about what happened to Old Testament people because of a lack of faith and therefore disobedience. Here's what he said. Hebrews 3, 1 through 14. And so, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God and are partners with those called to heaven, think carefully about this Jesus whom we declare to be God's messenger and high priest. For he was faithful to God who appointed him, just as Moses served faithfully when he was entrusted with God's entire house. But Jesus deserves far more glory than Moses, just as a person who builds a house deserves more praise than the house itself. For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. Moses was certainly faithful in God's house as a servant. His work was an illustration of the truths God would reveal later. But Christ, as the Son, is in charge of God's entire house, and we are God's house. If we keep our courage and remain confident in our hope in Christ, that is why the Holy Spirit says, Today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled and they tested me in the wilderness. There your ancestors tested and tried my patience, even though they saw my miracles for 40 years. So I was angry with them, and I said, their hearts always turn away from me. They refuse to do what I tell them. So in my anger, I took an oath. They will never enter my place of rest. Be careful then, dear brothers and sisters. Make sure that your own hearts are not evil and unbelieving, turning you away from the living God. You must warn each other every day while it is still today, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and hardened against God. For if we are faithful to the end, trusting God just as firmly as when we first believed, we will share in all that belongs to Christ. Faith and obedience. Gotta have them. They're the first two ingredients when it comes to both being a follower and, of course, for making followers. Faith and obedience are required. In fact, to close today, I want to read to everyone what Jesus specifically said through John to the church in Philadelphia about faith and obedience. Two things that we obviously need to have in these last days. Revelation 3, 8 through 13. I know all the things you do, and I have opened a door for you that no one can close. You have little strength, yet you obeyed my word and did not deny me. Look, I will force those who belong to Satan's synagogue, those liars who say they are Jews but are not, to come and bow down at your feet. They will acknowledge that you are the ones I love. Because you have obeyed my command to persevere, I will protect you from the great time of testing that will come upon the whole world to test those who belong to this world. I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. 
All who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God, and they will never have to leave it. And I will write on them the name of my God, and they will be citizens in the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down from heaven from my God. And I will also write on them my new name. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. 